Welcome to another episode of Hemp Barons. I'm Dan Humiston, and on today's show, this baron from the Pacific Northwest, along with her husband, are collaborating with hemp entrepreneurs to advance hemp food and nutrition for both people and animals. Let's join Joy's conversation with Tanya Farman from Queen of Hearts. Well, welcome, Tanya. Thank you for being on the show with us today. Thank you, Joy. It's a pleasure. We're going to get right into it here. I love the story of how I met your family. I was speaking at the Provender Alliance Conference, a natural foods conference that's taken place. It's, it's over 40 years, and it takes place every year in Hood River. And I got a call from your husband, Greg Nico, and he said, I can't believe you're in Hood River. I'm just across the river. I've been thinking about getting a consultation with you. Can, can you see me today? And spirit just moved me. Normally, I'm like, what? I'm in the middle of a conference. And I was like, come on over, Greg. Let's, let's have lunch together. And he told me his vision. He was so inspired by the hemp plant and had come from really and was at the tail end of only because he was ready to move on a really successful career, kiteboarding, international distribution, logistics. I was like, we need this man's mind in hemp. And (laughs) all I basically did was I gave him some information about where the, where the industry was at, which is in its completely nascent form here in the United States and said, all I can tell you is you're on fire. The plant has you, you've got the vision, go for it. And man, with your amazing help and all of the skills and talent that you've brought uh, to Northwest hemp and, or is it hemp Northwest? Hemp Northwest, yes. Hemp Northwest, Hemp Northwest. Yeah. But really, I'm, I'm excited to talk about Queen of Hearts. And then what became Queen of Hearts Hemp, amazing. You guys are the little oil press that could. So, <laughs> so tell me about your mutual journey into a hemp grain, hemp seed, the nutrient-dense hemp seed, and turning that into a business. How did, how did that come about for you? Yeah, well, the timing just was so incredible that you just happened to be there at that conference. And that when you pass through the tiny little town of Hood River, I mean, we're, we're barely a speck on the map. So it was really, that was kind of the beginning. And I, and I should back us up a little bit, is I was in nonprofit work for 10 years. And I worked in cancer survivorship. I started a nonprofit after my brother passed away from cancer to address the challenges of the after effects of the disease and how it affects young adults. And I was kind of at the tail end of that, really seeing a lot of the challenges, the uh, brutal and toxic effects of cancer treatment and combined with dietary challenges of these young survivors, was really ready to find a solution and kind of move on in in my career. And, And I didn't know what that was. But I knew I was inspired by the work that I did in cancer. And meanwhile, Greg was also kind of at the tail end of his, as far as he could go with his work in distribution and sales and, and in the kiteboarding industry. And he also was going through some health issues and he had two herniated discs in his back. He had a toxic job that didn't help. And all, all of this was happening at once. And uh, at the same time, he actually had someone who had gave, given him some CBD that helped his back issues tremendously. He went from not being able to walk for six weeks to being able to not only walk, but mountain bike and be active as he normally was. So that was about six months prior to Greg meeting you, Joy, and that really was kind of the catalyst of and a launch pad for us to to give ourselves permission, I guess, to get into hemp, if you will. And we knew that we wanted to be in the food side first. We're food people. And we had, I mean, I've been eating hemp hearts and hemp foods for years. So to me, it was just a, well, of course, we're going to get into food. Of course, we didn't really realize the challenges that we would have, but we can talk about that later. But that was our start. Yeah, that was our start. We said, hey, let's get into food. And 
it was a great start and things have evolved and changed and moved and shifted. That was our initial inspiration was my work in cancer and, and Greg's work uh, in sales. And we didn't realize at the time, but talked about it. I said, hey, I think we'll be a good team and let's give us a shot. It's so exciting. And you started out then with Hemp Northwest. Hemp Northwest, that idea came prior to Queen of Hearts. Am I right? Or did, is Queen of Hearts is basically the brand name of what Hemp, North, Hemp Northwest does? Explain the two companies. Yeah, we started with Hemp Northwest. And that was really to, we realized we're in this wonderful the Pacific Northwest is a very health aware and very cannabis aware region in the country. And it just so happens it is one of the largest producers of wheat as well, not only in the country, but in the world. Um, we, 98% of the wheat grown here is exported and it's the whole Eastern Oregon, Eastern Washington is wheat country. And really you know, na- naively we thought that, especially in Washington state, because when Washington when the, the WSDA hemp program went online, CBD was not allowed to grow. It was only for grain and fiber. And we That's were really right. excited about that because we thought, oh my gosh, all these wheat farmers are going to want to throw hemp in the ground and grow grain for us. And so that was the initial idea is let's build and develop this supply chain from seed, from the farmer to sale, and really get these farmers to, connected to the plant and learn about it. And it's a great rotational crop. And that has been much more of a challenge than we thought initially. We thought everyone would just say yes to hemp. And so we kind of changed our path and said, just slightly, not too much, but said, hey, let's go to the consumer side and start a consumer brand. And this will allow us to do market testing, get to know our consumers, get to know what they want, what their awareness is, hemp as a food product. And that was really a great idea for us because we've learned so much from the consumer and retailer side that has impacted how we run Hemp Northwest as a food processing or a seed processor. And and that information, of course, is so valuable moving forward as you develop the brand. And let's talk for a minute about the unique way that cannabis policy has shifted in the Pacific Northwest and, and specifically in Washington. And we thought 25 years ago or so, we thought, you know what, I bet there's going to be some states that actually legalize adult or medical use cannabis prior to legalizing hemp or what it's at the time we referred to as industrial hemp. And in fact, Washington did create, and I moved to the state of Washington. I'm in New York now, but I moved to the state of Washington in 1998, the year that they did legalize medical use cannabis. And then 2012, through an initiative of the people drafted by the ACLU, I-502, initiative I-502 passed, which was the legalization of adult use. And Here I was beating down the doors of the legislature then for another four years until March of 2016, when hemp then was legalized through an act of legislation in Washington. But by then, the country thought that we had tons of acreage and just fields of hemp by that Washington must be covered in hemp by 2016. And I sat there and said, we actually haven't planted a single legal seed. We legalized (laughs) medical and adult use cannabis in Washington before hemp. And yes. so, and, and, and it's between the, as health conscious as it is, you know, and, and it's, it's true here, there were, you know, you could get hemp seed milk in your lattes at certain coffee shops, you know, for, for years by then, but not so much in the rest of the, of the country. And folks here didn't realize when it comes to grain, you know, we're talking about, and I have to say it at every show, because I don't know who's listening. We want all the listeners to know that the hemp seed is a superfood that requires literally a super tape. It is the highest digestible form of protein (laughs) in the entire plant and animal kingdom, more than soy, more than beef, more than chicken, more than whey. And why is this? It has no trypsin inhibitors. Trypsin inhibitors are, of course, properties within these food sources that prevent us from absorbing protein. And the hemp seed is void of those, absent of those inhibitors. Also, It has a full profile of amino acids, maybe lacking a little bit of lysine, which we can get in other food sources easily, which is a tremendous uh, metabolizing 
you know, for some amino acids and protein, this is how our body absorbs and uses those properties. Additionally, it is the perfect ratio of omega-3s and 6s, these valuable essential fatty acids. They're essential because our bodies and our brains need them for functioning, and we don't make them ourselves. We have to get them from our food sources. And these omega-3s and 6s, normally we would need to go into the, the fish and, and even particularly a salmon for a real rich mm-hmm. oil. Um, and here we have this plant, this fast-growing gluten-free vegetarian source of the finest protein in the world that is also giving us with, in generally speaking, a three tablespoon serving of hulled seeds, a full day supply of omega-3s and 6s and 10 grams of digestible protein. And then finally, a new factoid that I had learned about the hemp seed. And there's so much more to tell with vitamins and minerals and all of this. Uh, And even the the hulls have such uh, value as well for fiber and, and folic acid. But the hemp seed is one of only two seeds, it's the, the other one being the raw pumpkin seed, in the entire seed in that kingdom that actually leaves an alkaline ash in the bloodstream and promoting then uh, pH balance. So here you are delivering this incredible food source, and I love your stickers, feed the world, period, hemp, period. I love them, queen of hearts. And so first, Will you tell me a little bit about the sort of cultural challenges that you face? And then I want to get into your products and how we're not just talking about human consumption. We're talking about animal consumption. And I love this huge offering of products that you have on your site. But tell me a little bit about that challenge of the legalization of other forms of cannabis before this this low THC, non-intoxicating industrial form. Yeah, well, it really is ironic because when you look at the map of all of this, well, there's a few that have recreational um, cannabis, but here in the Northwest, it was legal before hemp. And so people think of hemp as cannabis and the same conversely. And even people that are very health conscious and very hemp aware or cannabis aware, there is a confusion. And I'm sure you you have had guests that can speak to the confusion between seed oil and hemp oil. And we're not even talking about that. We're talking at a base level of, oh, a hemp heart. Oh, does that come from the marijuana seeds? Or is there THC in there? And we get these questions from consumers today, and it always blows my mind, and I, and I don't make assumptions now about anyone's knowledge when we're at farmer's markets. It's one of the first questions we actually ask people when they approach our, our booth is, are you familiar with hemp? And are you familiar with hemp as a food? And sometimes we get some blank stares and such, and then people, you get occasional people that will make a joke about that it'll get you high. But even when I brought this to my parents, they, they joked that I was selling weed gummies or, you know, they were, they joked that I was in the weed business. I want to take a quick break to thank you for listening to today's show and to invite you to check out all of our other cannabis podcasts. As the industry's number one cannabis podcast network, we are constantly adding new shows. So go to mjbulls.com to see our new shows and to become part of the Cannabis Podcast Network. It really has been a challenge in an area where we thought that it would be very simple and that consumer awareness would actually be pretty high about the differences of hemp versus marijuana or cannabis. And it was, it still is a challenge, especially with retailers are are learning but you, you would even think that retailers would mostly know and one of the questions they get is or they ask is are you selling in dispensaries and as you know it is a completely different business model to have your hemp products go into the path of dispensaries depending on if that is in Washington Oregon it's there's slightly different regulations around that but uh, we have to get a completely separate permit from the Oregon Liquor Control Bar Board in Oregon. Uh, in Washington, it's completely separate as well. So it's a lot of 
In Washington, it's not even allowed. A marijuana dispensary yeah. in Washington must sell marijuana. So the product must contain at least some amount of above 0.3 THC in order to legally be sold in a dispensary in Washington. So you're, unless you put a little yeah. marijuana up in there, girl, you're not eligible, yeah. even your product to, to be sold exactly. in a marijuana dispensary. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and I think, you know, and terminology too, it, and it's so sad that we're in this part of the revolution of where we're having to sort of separate the types. We have different law, we have different legislation, we have different industries and purposes, and we need to educate. And yet here we are. It is all one plant. It is all cannabis coming from the plant family, Cannabaceae, and it's selective breeding and human intervention over thousands of years that we've really created these two types of cannabis, right? We've got this industrial low THC. We used to call it low resin, but that's not even true anymore. As we breed these high resin, high cannabinoid extract varieties of hemp where we have to you know, continually tame, of course, the THC in the resin. But, but anyway, these industrial low THC uh, varying resin types of, of cannabis that we call hemp, generally we refer to them as varieties and cultivars, although in these extract types, we also call them chemovars. And, and generally these types of hemp are planted with machines, mechanically cultivated, mechanically harvested in huge industrial scales, you know, um, and also we have some craft farmers, but we're talking about, you know, hemp, nutrition, bioplastics, cosmeceuticals, body care, pharmaceuticals, bio resins, building materials, industrial sealants and coatings, energy and fuel, nanotechnology. So with this huge scale. And then we have these other types of cannabis, medical, adult use, sacramental cannabis, and they're generally high resin intoxicating forms, although of course, topical applications that don't have any uptake agents or break the blood brain barrier, those wouldn't be intoxicating. And also THCA, the, you know, the acidic form, um, the non-decarboxylated form of tetrahydrocannabinol, Delta 9, that would not intoxicating either. And we call those di different types of medical and adult use cannabis strains or chemovars and generally planted by hand and cultivated, harvested by hand. Although, of course, with the legal markets, we're seeing some fabulously interesting equipment. But so there were those two types. And yet, sort of the medical and adult use community has adopted the word cannabis and, and we're using the word hemp, but we're all cannabis. So it's confusing. And I noticed even on your website, as we move into the product, there is some confusion there as well. And I know it's, it's difficult for all everyone to navigate, but I see that you have a hemp seed oil product and then you have a hemp oil product and the hemp oil product is your CBD product, but you chose to call it hemp oil as opposed to hemp extract. And that is a very helpful nomenclature or moniker to help people realize they're looking at different things. So we, we generally, and, and, and again, much of the hemp extract and CBD industry is calling it hemp oil, but it is a great way if you ever do relabeling that you've got hemp seed oil, oil pressed from the seed, and then you have hemp extract, which are oils, properties extracted from the, you know, the resinous parts of the plant, the leaves and the flowering tops. But let's talk about some of these exciting <laughs> products you have because you have three pages of products at Queen of Hearts Hemp. Well, yeah. And, you know, just about our website, just consumer education wise, I, I agree, Joy, the, the language really needs to be um, better understood and we really need to clarify what everything means. And we're really learning also as we're doing our own market testing and figuring out what consumers are expecting or what their challenges or confusion is and how we can kind of reshape that a little bit. Uh, we do a ton of consumer education um, and I, I feel like sometimes that's what our main role is at a lot of these events and markets, which is great because it's so it's so needed. <laughs> On our website, because of the challenges with credit card processing, uh, we are on a platform that, and we're, we have a new website that's about to launch, but we've had to change the language, unfortunately, to fit within some of this credit card processing, these models that don't want you to say, CBD or cannabis. And so right now that's just it's just really unfortunate about that. That's why we actually don't have some specific language on the website. Hopefully that will change. 
navigating all of it is so difficult. It's so, yeah. so difficult. But you, you managed to have a merchant account. You've got a merchant account. Well, we, we right? do, but we're, it's not a good one at all. We're treated like a lot of the other or the cannabis as a marijuana and a lot of the, you know, anything at above 0.3% THC levels. That's basically. They've got you in one of these high risk merchant account plans. Yeah, we're were in a high risk account. Exactly. So what's amazing is that you have it at all. So keep in mind that it's difficult. It's a barrier to entry right now. And the HIA, you know, Senators Ron Wyden. And yep. Mitch McConnell, you know, two gentlemen from opposite sides of the country and opposite sides of the aisle, but that have really been championing. And as we often say about Mitch McConnell, you may have 99 problems with Mitch McConnell, but hemp ain't one, championing the, the hemp movement. And they wrote in April letters, the two of them co signed letters to the four big, you know, federal uh, banking institutions from the FDIC to the US Treasury and on down, and were basically ignored which is interesting, saying, listen, hemp is legal. We have legalized, every part of it is legal. The cannabinoids, the whole bit. Please serve these, service these accounts. We did this for, this is a, a re-energization of the American farmer and the American consumer and the manu- American manufacturer. And these accounts need to be served. And they, in fact, we still have problems. And then the HIA, it commandeered the Times Square uh, digital boards and went on a campaign, which we're still on right now. So the Times Square billboard uh, plays 30 seconds every hour for 20 hours a day. It's been going on since May 24th, and we've got it until January. Now, we were doing Facebook Stop Censoring Hemp, and we were able to move the needle with Facebook's policy around certain CBD sales and their ability to advertise. And then we just recently switched to the banking industry. Banks stop denying hemp. And it's just a fascinating problem and a, a huge barrier to entry. So I'm just thrilled that you've even got your merchant account, because there are many folks who can't even get it. And the fact that we have to sit here and be thankful that you're being exploited and treated like a controlled substance for your 8.99% transaction fee or whatever you're having to do just to be able to deliver these products to the American consumer. It's just, it's just wild. So let's get back to those products because I love them. Your hemp and hound line. I mean, tell, tell us about how this product line developed and and let's get into that for a couple minutes. Well, so with Hemp Northwest, our processing company and our processing side of the business, we quickly realize, as many seed processors do, that uh, when you press for the wonderful nutritional seed oil, you get this co-product, or as I like to say, partner product, the seed which is a seed cake. It comes out in this thick pellet form, the fiber and the protein that is bound together by the residual seed oil. And that is then further milled and concentrated into protein powder, which is a food product that we sell as Queen of Hearts. But we had a lot of this meal and we didn't realize the amount that it would it would pile up just so quickly. And At the same time, we had an equine nutrition company reach out to us. We have quite a bit of a equine industry and and performance and barrel racing horses, a lot of quite a community here in the Pacific Northwest. And we had a couple of them reach out to us and and inquire about hemp as an ingredient and a protein source for horses. And we sent some samples out of seed cake um, and the seed oil already was gaining traction in the equine industry as a wonderful source of GLA and many other minerals and, and vitamins as well. But the seed cake was a bit of a mystery and we had nutritional tests done on the seed cake. And it has a wonderful protein and fiber content, a 28% protein, 28% fiber. And we realized that there's a lot of value in that. And and so we started making it into other products. We put it into a dog treat. We put it into a horse treat. And dogs absolutely love it just by itself as the seed cake. Uh, The horses eat it just all day long as a supplement. It's not an approved feed yet, but it is a wonderful added supplement of uh, protein in those residual oils. 
And then also just recently, and this is something that we were connected with through the farmer's market that we're a part of here in Hood River, is we have a lot of small regional ranches in the area, pig ranches, small cattle ranches, uh, grass-fed, everything from chickens, goats, you name it. And they started showing interest in feeding the hemp seed cake to their animals. And that was both as a finishing supplement for possibly for taste, uh, as well as a protein source. So a lot of times they can't find an affordable protein source in a feed for their animals. And we have a lot of the sea cake and it was a it was a perfect connection and a great mutual collaboration to be able to offer these small farms and ranches uh, seed cake to feed their animals. And so that's kind of how we got into the animal market. And uh, it, it's a it's great mutual benefit for everyone involved. So it helps us offload a lot of that seed cake while providing a lot of nutritional a great nutritional profile for these animals and it offers a great solution to the ranchers as well that are looking for a supplement to feed their animals. So much so, and we are working very hard. I know the Ag Seed Coalition through Friends of Hemp um, is, you know, raising money because we need to get all of these. It's wonderful that we're able to, these animal owners, and particularly the equestrian, you know, community, want the best for their animals. And so, of course, they understand the nutritional profile and they can't get enough of it. And meanwhile, AFCO, the FDA, it is not approved as an ag feed or animal feed in the huge market at large. And and it requires actually an application per species, per ingredient to become approved one at a time. And it's a very expensive process. You've got to get it right. Um, so and and the only species that they combine together are cats and dogs because we don't use those for human consumption. So they'll let you do one application for approval of an ingredient for cats and dogs, but other than that, it's another application separate for horses, another application separate for you know all forms of livestock. Each one down the line is individual, and then the hemp seed is an ingredient. Hemp seed oil is an ingredient. You know, the cake is an ingredient. It's just amazing how much of a process it is. So thank you for making this more widely available so that uh, while we're going through this revolution to create a legal and regulatory framework to deliver the world's most nutritious, versatile, valuable plant, um, you know, you're, you're making this stuff available. And part of that, and, and I think this is a wonderful way to, to conclude our interview here, is through cooperation. You know, cannabis in all of its forms is here to make the world a better place, to make things work together and people work together. Even on an industrial scale, we see that when we add hemp seed oil to these volatile chemicals and properties that we've been using in industrial purposes for years and decades, our better living through chemistry experiment, we add hemp seed oil and all of a sudden, even these volatile uh, chemicals start working better together. It's a synthesizer and it, it breeds cooperation. And we have to, as we are building this infrastructure together, where we're asking the farmers to grow a crop for which there's very little infrastructure, and we're asking investors to invest in an infrastructure for which there is growing biomass, you know, we're, we're working with each other, putting one foot in front of, of the other and working in tandem. So how are some of the ways that Queen of Hearts Hemp has sort of worked cooperatively? Yeah. So, well, one thing that you mentioned, the Feed Coalition, we're actively involved with Hunter's work uh, as part of the Hemp Feed Coalition and her work with AFCO and, and trying to get this approved as an animal feed. Uh, we're submitting samples to them and we're both on the e ingredient subcommittee and the equine nutrition subcommittee to get this approved. Um, and that really is not just about getting it approved as an animal feed. It's, it's as much as um, an important factor of moving the supply chain along because right now that seed cake, that co-product from pressing the seed oil is piling up. The seed oil itself 
it, we can sell seed oil all day long, whether it's to equine or keep for human consumption. A lot of it is going to CBD companies as a carrier oil. And that seed oil, there's a ton of value and companies know about that. That's not difficult for and us we've, to you sell. Know, we've touched upon that. Of course, as you know, I'm a co-founder and senior advisor to Colorado Hemp Work, which is, yeah. which is another grain first post-prohibition hemp grain processing facility in the United States based in, in Colorado. And so, and I, I, of course, interviewed Matt and, and, and thank you for, you know, reminding the listeners that of course the presses can run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We, we just can barely keep up with the, with the demand for hemp seed oil, but that seed cake continues uh, to collect. And of course we need very much. It's, it's part of the supply chain indeed. Um, and clearly that would expand these markets for our valuable products. But Let's get into the cooperation for a second. Yeah. Can you can you talk about thank you? Let's get into that for a moment if we could answer that question. Yeah. So with Queen of Hearts, it really has required quite a bit of collaboration. And that's what I love about being in the food side, Joy, is there's a small group of us in the country that are focused on uh, food specifically. And that's where you, you mentioned Matt from Colorado Hemp Works. Uh, we source our hearts from, from, uh, from Matt and we've purchased seed oil from Roger from healthy oil seeds when we don't have enough oil to press or seeds to press rather. And really it's, we're very transparent and open about that and having it be an open conversation because we all need to help each other and we all need to be a part of moving this forward. And really, as you said, the little oil oil seed or oil press it could, that, that's kind of how we sometimes feel. Um, but really collaborating with the other people in the space is so important to us. And uh, coming from nonprofit work, that's all I know. I, I mean, collaborating with other organizations and business and government entities uh, was the only way that I knew. And so that's how we move forward with Queen of Hearts is uh, whether it is with local uh, businesses and doing education programs or whether it's working with other processors like Healthy Oil Seeds or with Matt at Colorado Hemp Works. And we actually just got out of that Western U.S. Hemp Growers Conference and had talked to the organizer about uh, putting together a seed and gr rather a grain, uh, that hemp seed panel and topic for the next event. And I want to get everyone that is in the seed side, that grain side of hemp to contribute to that. And so for Queen of Hearts, that's just, that's just kind of been our MO. We, that's, that's, it probably hasn't propelled us to the top of the, the food chain, if you will. We're not trying to be a large brand. We really believe that, especially on the food side, that there is going to be a regional uh, solution for the food brands. You know, we know that Evo Hemp is, is doing what they're doing, and we've got, oh gosh, over on the East Coast, I'm, I'm having a blank or I'm drawing a blank. Victory, Victory <laughs> Hemp Food. Victory, Victory Hemp, hemp thank food. you. Yes, and, indeed, Chad yeah. Rosen. Yeah, and so either I really believe there's a place for all of us. There's room for us all, and I I think that collaboration is key to make that happen and for all of us to understand that. So I, I'm very transparent about that, and I invite people to collaborate with us. and And we're still in learning phases. I mean, I every day I joke that that uh, we could be uh, making our mortgage, or we could just barely or we could you know be crushing it <laughs> and so it's really a learning process and and learning from everybody else who's been in this in the food game for a long time because really when it comes to hemp foods food products and ingredients it is just like any other seed or food and so that's kind of how we look at the food side cbd and obviously the phytocannabinoid side adds a, another layer of complexity, but I'm still along the same lines as collaboration. I know that there are a lot of people in the CBD side that are pretty closed off to that, but everyone is new to this. And that's the beautiful thing about the space is really we're all still learning and we're all still uh, figuring it out. 
Indeed. No, um, on, on many levels, that, that's very true. And also, I want to thank you and Greg for your leadership in the Pacific Northwest Hemp Industries Association, which is a, a tri-state regional chapter of the Hemp Industries Association. Thank you so much for everything you do for, for your advocacy with the Ag Seed Coalition and to serve on those committees, for your service in building the hemp community in the Pacific Northwest, and for the tremendous role that you're playing in building the supply chain for this densely nutritious vegetarian, gluten-free source um, of protein and omegas and vitamins and minerals. Basically, thank you for everything that you and your incredible husband, Greg Nieko, do. Tanya Farman, it's been such a pleasure to have you on the show, and we'll have you on again. Thank you so much. Joy, thank you so much for all of your work and really for inspiring us to move forward in this path. It's been a wild adventure and a great ride, so thank you for all your work. I, I love being able to play that role. Your husband, you were both so already there. It was so great that you needed to hear me say go. And you went, you were there. Anyway, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Miss Tanya. 